the problem was is I would turn inward. I would figure, mm -hmm. well, there's something wrong with me. It's, you know, I'm not gifted, I'm not called, I'm not. If God, if God promotes you to run the company, it's a promotion of the Lord. Yeah. Then you won't have to do self-promotion to sustain it because he on. protects it. Guys, this is Ben Lim with Ben Lim TV Revival Connects and today we are in Portland, Oregon and we have such a great special honor with Pastor Bill Johnson. Such an yeah, honor to have you, absolutely. sir. Absolutely. Privilege. Oh yep. my gosh, I mean, we really need no introduction here. Yeah. Uh, you really are a living legend and uh, from the bottom of my heart, representing our generation, thank you Thanks. for all that you've pioneered and you've endeavored in. Thanks. And uh, I, of course, there's been years of journey uh, you know, pursuing the things of God. Yeah. Um, what, what do you think has been the most difficult thing in these last, you know, 40 years uh, in ministry, even just being a, a, a generational pastor within your family as well? Um, probably uh, learning to uh, enjoy process. You know, it, it is a journey and uh, you have incredible breakthroughs, then you have uh, disappointments and learning how to take this relational journey to where it's supposed to go. It's not just about my achievement, it's about what I've become. Come on. And, uh, and that's what he's working on. He's working on a people that regardless of circumstances can approach him with confidence in his goodness. Wow, uh, do you feel, do you still feel like you're becoming uh, oh, after all that you've seen, experienced, achieved in your I lifetime? Just, I just got started. Yeah, come yeah. on. No, he's, he's, really, he's really wanting us to represent Jesus well in purity and power. And uh, we can't do the greater works until we've done the same works. So we've yeah. got a ways to go. Wow, come on, yeah. amen. Yeah. And uh, uh, earlier you said, enjoy the process. It's yeah. all about intimacy with Jesus. Yeah. I remember, uh, of course, your book, which is a classic, Strengthening Yourself in the Lord. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, what was one of the most <coughs> difficult times, if I may ask, it may be a little personal, yeah. but what was one of the most difficult times for you uh, oh. Yeah, pursuing the Lord. Absolutely, it was, it was that I had an ache for revival. I had an ache for what God had done in past in past times, and I wasn't seeing it. And that was that was the hard thing. It was no personal trial has been as great as that, because I w I would ache for more. And but the problem was is I would turn inward. I would figure, mm -hmm. well, there's something wrong with me. It's you know I'm not gifted. I'm not called. I'm not whatever. And uh, and the enemy works hard to get us to turn inward because there's no hope there and uh, it's a dead end road. So uh, when I learned to stop doing that, hmm. uh, that's where we start getting some good breakthrough and that's where I learned to not make it about me, not take myself so seriously, but continue to hunger, but then learn how to follow the prayer, the cry that you have before the Lord, follow it with risk, see what he'll show up and do. And uh, when, when that combination of events took place, uh, things changed for me and I, I learned how to strengthen myself I learned how to not make it about me, which mm. is, you know, it's a real trap. You know, when you're hungry for more of God, you can make it about you unintentionally. Wow. And I did. I mm. did. So my advice to, you know, young people that I talked to, in fact, I was just on the plane today. Somebody said, what would you say to your 26-year-old self? Mm. Wow. And I, would, I told her, I says, I would tell myself not to take myself so seriously. Mm. Wow. Yeah, it's not about you. Just give everything to Jesus, do what he says, and enjoy the journey. Wow. And uh, especially as leaders, as pastors, you know, my father's a pastor. Mm -hmm. I've been pastoring for yep, eight, yep. nine years. Yep. Sometimes, I mean, ministry is serious. We're, yeah. we're, we're dealing with serious lives. Life and death. Yeah. yeah. It's a, I mean, how do you deal with that balance, still being childlike, pure and innocent, uh, but still it, there's a severity and a fear of God to all of this? Yeah, I'm not, I'm not called to be serious. I'm called to a life of joy. Come on. And, uh, and I can weep with those who weep without losing joy. Come on. I can mourn with those who mourn. I can, I can be in the trenches and experience the pain of people around me without losing joy. Joy is who we are. It's our place in Christ. It's Come bigger on. than problems. It's bigger than circumstances. We're only as strong as our joy. Mm. And part of the weakness comes down to the fact that we think our seriousness is strength. Wow. It's childlikeness that is strength. Yeah. Come on. Amen. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, every, everybody knows the story, of course, Bethel, mm -hmm. uh, Bethel Church, just the mm -hmm. momentum, the mm -hmm. world influence, the impact that you and your house have made. And once again, thank you for all of your years of service and dedication. Yeah, uh, but one thing I'm constantly impressed, just blown away about is the continual hunger and the constant yearning after the more of God. Yeah. How do you stay in that place? Um, 
it's not hard to stay hungry when you put yourself on the front lines to serve people mm. and you see it work and you see it not work. Mm. You know, if I just do a pulpit ministry and throw out theories, throw out promises, and I don't get in the trenches and weep with those who weep, Come on. pray for people, see them healed, pray for people, not see them healed, then there's no challenge in front of me. I'm, I, I can have a, an image of my role as just being a pulpit person to stir up the troops. It's very easy to have an, an unrealistic view of life. You've got to get down where, the, where there's pain. You've got to get down where there's, where there's crisis and there's need. And whenever you're exposed to that on a regular basis, you either become callous to it or you remain hungry. Yeah. And uh, uh, it's the only way to, is, is you, have to, you have to voluntarily subject yourself to need. Mm. And it, what it does, it awakens something in you. As long, as long as you don't get hopeless. You know, hunger takes people, some people to frustration. Yeah. But, some, uh, uh, but hunger is supposed to take us to him. Come if on, it takes me good. to him, I'll be good. Wow, yeah. that's so good. Yeah. Uh, I, I remember growing up, Pastor Bill, watching my own <coughs> father pastor his church. And mm -hmm. sometimes there would be nobody. And of course, he's Korean. So, you know, he would have the early morning Korean prayers. Yeah, yeah. But he would just be crying out to the yeah. Lord in faithfulness. Yeah. And uh, I'm sure there's so much that your own father and mother have modeled yeah. and displayed to you. Right. Uh, what would be some of those golden nuggets or keys? Oh, my dad was, uh, my mom and dad both uh, are such champions of people that, that are not the most sought after. They, they would mm. be the one that wow. would champion the the person that maybe doesn't qualify to be the missionary, doesn't qualify to be the evangelist or whatever, they're not gifted enough or whatever. He was just a champion of those folks. He'd fight for them. He'd fight for them, he'd give them opportunity and, and they became the real heroes of the faith. Wow. These people now have been the ones that have impacted the course of history very profoundly, but, but they, they uh, were not highly favored when they started. They needed somebody to, b to believe in them. And my dad was just this, amazing mercy giver he could wow. he could visit someone in the hospital and they would just feel like royalty because of his kindness to them and wow. and just the value that he had you know uh, we went through a time where the church uh, split and uh, because of of his approach to the lord and and yet he 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 kept so kind towards those who left wow. that by the time they came to the end of their life when one guy when he was the ringleader of the rebellion quote so to speak um, he called my dad to please pray for his wife in the hospital. Wow. And when she died, uh, he wanted him to do the funeral. And so it's just you just keep those bridges built. You know, so far as it depends with you, be at peace with all men. That's the scripture. Yeah. And that's what he did. He modeled that so powerfully. And uh, I, I live from the fruit that he fought for. Wow. Yeah, it's impacted me tremendously. Come on. Yeah. And uh, I mean, I think really <laughs> the whole global movement of Bethel, mm -hmm. uh, you know, has been surrounded the foundation of family. And, uh, yeah, you know, I yeah, mean, yeah. I, I love whenever Chris Valentin says, yeah. oh, you're a Johnson. And, you know, I mean, <laughs> uh, it may be very humorous, but there's yeah. something just about family no, that even true. within your own family with, you know, your children that you that's serve and, and you model to the whole world. Tell yeah. us about that. You know, um, I just, I just don't, this all may sound a little strange. I don't have a dream to build a big ministry. Come on. I don't, it makes no difference to me. Yeah. But I do have dreams about building big people. Come on. I want people to become significant. I want you to stand fully in who God made you to be. So I look at my children. That's what I want for them. Mm. I don't care if their title's big. I don't care Come on. about any of those things as long as they become this passionate lover of Jesus that can illustrate it in who God made them to be. I want them to, to carry that anointing well, to carry that grace well. And, uh, and so that's what we've given ourselves to, you know, I, is, is we, we raised our kids with, uh, with an intention that they would shape the course of world history. Mm. And Come we on. didn't do it in a pressure way because you can burden them with assignments, you know, that, that they don't have a yeah. grace for. That's, that's not smart. But, mm. but you can keep promise in front of them. And, and uh, we would expose them to world need. You know, we'd expose them to pain, we'd expose, expose them to the supernatural, expose them to the promises of God, and, and it just opened up stuff in them, and so th they're running with it, and they're doing really, really beautiful, you Come know. On. Yeah, yeah. We, we have uh, three children, 
and amazing spouses, each of them, and then ten, 10 grandchildren. Yeah. And wow, so much fun. Wow, you're, you're rich, Pastor Bill, you're <laughs> yes, very I rich. Am. Yes, uh, I am. Uh, of course, with BSSM, schools yeah. and ministry, yeah, yeah. that's been duplicated, multiplied all around the yeah, world. Yeah, yeah. And it's all about, of course, deploying, releasing leaders, yep, revivalists yep, yep, yep. with that same DNA. Yeah. Uh, uh, with that expansion, I mean, I remember hearing you say, you know, we want to raise up people with power, but also purity. Yes, yes. Um, I mean, what do you think has been the trend uh, of our Christian faith, of our society right now in our generation, uh, just concerning the, this tension, power, purity, so much power, and, you know, where are we now? People tend to do one or the other. They either focus on power or purity, you know. I had a guy tell me once, he said, I'll, I'll start praying for the sick when my character is better. Mm. And I said, well, that may sound good, but who gives you the right to decide when you're going to obey God? Wow. He said, lay hands on the sick and pray for them. Come on. And, uh, and people think that character, character can be developed apart from obeying God. Wow. <laughs> How do you do wow. that? Yeah. Do what he says. That's where it gets shaped in us. And, and so it's just equal emphasis. You know, I, I don't call it a balancing act, but it's just like, you know, I just want to walk in purity and holiness as, as much as power and, and vice versa. It's, it, I call it the two legs you stand on. You want both legs the same length. Yeah. If you overemphasize one, you wobble, yeah. and uh, and it's just it's unnecessary. Wow, wow. Yeah. Uh, uh, where do you think we are as a whole? You know, here we are, 2018. You know, uh, compassionate action, mm -hmm. uh, stadium crusade. Yep, yep. You know, harvest, all of that. But where do you think we are? Uh, you know, as a whole, as the body of Christ. There is a new boldness coming, and compassionate action, and your ministry, and. You know, so many of these, there's a, there's a level of boldness that is coming to the forefront that is amazing. Mm. And because of it, you know, we see, we see the things that, you know, a generation or two ago, we only saw happen within the four walls of the church. We now see it at the bus station. Come on. We now see it in the mall. We see it everywhere. In fact, we, I think we have more miracles now uh, happen outside of the building yeah. than we do in. Because we have an army out there. They're yeah. there every day. They don't have to go out to do the stuff. They are there shopping. Yeah. That's where they, you know, that's where they do it. So we see that element, the bold, the boldness that God responds to, the acts uh, for, uh, take note of their threats, grant your bond servants would speak your word with all boldness while you extend your hand to heal. So it's the boldness that attracts the power of God into an environment. That's happening. But we also have this really amazing thing with wisdom where God is raising up people and he's sprinkling them into culture. Come on. And he's putting them in the political offices. And we have to be careful because we tend to think in Wall Street terms, which to me means we think in terms of ruling something. That's where we give influence. Daniel, Joseph, Esther, none of them ruled anything. Mm. But they, they, they shaped the course of history for multiple nations because they served well. So if we can get back to our strong suit, and that's to serve well, to serve the teacher, serve the principal. And he says boldness, this power thing, but this wisdom where people are getting thrust into places, in corporations, in industries that Christians years ago would have nothing to do with. Mm -hmm. not, not because they were unholy, just they weren't considered, you know, valuable. They weren't considered um, wise to enter into. And now we have people, you know, with the same fire that you have, in the mayor's office, the Come same on. fire you have in the, uh, you know, um, helping athletes to invest the money wisely. Come on, you know, it's that it's that sort of stuff. They're they're everywhere. Lawyers yeah. and are in our school. We've got lawyers and doctors Come and on. engineers and all these people that are already have great experience in life, wanting to know how to live the supernatural in that world. This is just a, an incredible time to be yeah. alive because we've got the power working and the wisdom. Wow, and it's that combination. That's yeah. that's that's the heart of God. Come on, so good. Yeah. Pastor Bo, we're running out of time. I want to ask right. you one yep. more question. Yep. Uh, revival or reformation? Uh, revival is always supposed to lead to reformation. Come on. It's unto something. Mm -hmm. It's short-lived when, uh, when people try to control a move of God, mm. try wow. to direct it. No revival ends because of excess. Wow. Excess is a possibility, but wow. they don't end because of that. They only end because of control. Wow. And if revival has the effect it's supposed to have, it will eventually creep up the uh, levels of, of, of society. You know, there's different uh -huh. levels of society. If it continues to burn the way it's supposed to, it will eventually touch the mind molders, those who shape culture itself. And when that happens, you have reformation. Wow. And that's the heart of God in every move of God. Come on. And if it doesn't happen, it's only because somebody, somebody killed it. 
Wow, that's that's yeah. a good word. Yeah. Um, yeah. Before we close, Pastor Bill, yeah. which one's your favorite book? I've heard you say Ooh. God is good, but Ooh. I mean you're you're coming out with books almost like yeah. every three months. But uh, you know, what's your favorite book? I don't have one. It's like yeah, asking okay. it's like asking what my favorite child is. You oh, know? oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I have different ones that are especially fond to me because of seasons that I was in. Yeah. The God is good book. The Lord spoke to me. The others, they they grew in me out of desire, wow, and He wow. confirmed I was to write. But this one, He interrupted me in a prayer meeting and told me what to do. Wow. Uh, the God is good. I just finished. I, actually, it was just released this week, called The Way of Life. Wow. And it's the culture of heaven on earth. Come on. And uh, one I've been working on for dreaming about for years. Wow. I finished, and it comes out in December. It's called Raising Giant Killers, mm. and it's Come about on. raising children. So wow. yeah. So I I don't know. It just depends on what what you're hungry for. Yeah. You know, the strength in yourself is is really good for those who just have to learn how to face disappointment and how to get through to the other side to be victorious. That, that whole world. So it depends. Wow, come on. Wow, Pastor That's Bill, much, thank yeah. you so much yeah, for your time yeah. and just your wisdom. Yeah. I wish we could be doing this all day. Yeah. I'll just be listening to your other teachings. Uh, but before we close off in a prayer of impartation, yeah. Yeah. Uh, is there one last thing you want to say to the world? Mm. To the church or to the world? Uh, <laughs> I guess the church and the world, yeah. You know, he's better than you think. God is better than you think. Come on. And, uh, and what we have to do is because the goodness of God is so missing from the consciousness, the awareness of humanity, including the church, we know it theologically but not experientially, mm -hmm. that because of that we have to adjust our thinking to the reality of His nature. And when we do that, we find reason to hope in every situation. Come on. And uh, it's one of our gals told us years ago, uh, the person with the most hope will always have the most influence. Wow! And if you want to have good. influence in this in this time that we live in, don't allow a day of hopelessness to ever happen, Come no on. matter what you're facing. He saw it beforehand. He has an answer, and uh, that's that's my that's my word. Is look into the heart of God, to the eyes of God, and the hope that He has. There's not one problem we're facing on the planet that He doesn't have in His mind right now the perfect answer. He's just waiting for one of Come his on. own to seek him for the solution. You know, it's the glory of God to conceal a matter, the glory of kings to search out a matter. Come on. He hides it for us, not from us. Amen. And it's kings that find it. So Come we've got to discover our royalty, find what he's got hidden for us. So. Wow. Yep. Pastor Bill, yep. one of my favorite quotes from you is, it takes the heart of a king to serve. Yeah. And it's, uh, I'm going to yeah. butcher it, so I don't, <laughs> but you guys all got it. Uh, we serve with the heart of a king, and we rule with the heart of a servant. Amen. Yep, Thank that's you for yeah. properly quoting yeah. that. Pastor Bill, can you just look yeah, to that yeah. left camera to yeah. our audience and just yeah. uh, close, uh, just bless them with yeah. the Father, Father's blessing? Absolutely, yeah. I do. I bless you in the name of the Lord Jesus. I pray what Paul prayed over the church at Ephesus, the church that kind of had everything. You know, what wow. do you pray for the person who had everything? He prayed this. He said, I pray that God would give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him. My cry is that our together, our eyes would be open to a new level of the goodness of God, the kindness of God, the power, the purposes of God, that we would see Him more clearly and that we would never, ever, ever lose sight of what we've seen in that wisdom, and in that spirit of revelation. And that from this audience, God, I ask that you would raise up a generation of transformational Come people on. that are not satisfied until they see the kingdoms of this world belonging to you entirely. I pray this for the honor of the name Jesus. Amen. 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 Pastor Bill, yeah. thank you so yeah. much for your yeah. time Absolutely. and your wisdom. Yeah. We appreciate thanks. you and your thanks. family. Thanks.